good water. Ever wonder what's in your water? Well, different elements, when in solution, have characteristic colors to them. Copper has a characteristic blue color, and that's because most of the red portion of the spectrum is absorbed, so we see blue. However, we're going to use this general principle to analyze different types of elements in different types of water samples using different types of analytical technologies. Hello, and welcome to the Lab Report. I'm your host, Paul Krampitz, and today we'll be talking about the analysis of water using an ICP plasma spectrometer. In order to do the analysis of water, we're going to need some sort of heat source, sort of like a lighter here. This is a butane lighter. It burns at about eight to 900 degrees C, something like that. Commercial flames that you might be familiar with, like welding and aerosetylene torches, they can reach temperatures of 3,500 degrees Kelvin. However, we need something even hotter. We're going to be using an argon plasma, like we use on the Optima ICP system. Uh, the plasma itself is hot ionized argon gas with a mixture of electrons in it, maintained by an induced magnetic field. And an induced magnetic field is probably very similar to the first experiments you ever did in school, where you took a battery, you wrapped it around a nail, and you picked up graphite shavings. What did you do? You made an electromagnet. Well, this whole system that creates the plasma actually creates temperatures of 10,000 degrees Kelvin, or hotter than the surface temperature of the sun, believe it or not. When we introduce water into the plasma, it quickly converts the liquid into a solid, into a gas, so soon you have a gaseous mixture of elements that were actually in your water. Now each one of those elements has a nucleus uh, surrounded by shells of electrons. When it hits the plasma, those electrons in the different orbitals are excited and they jump up to a higher energy level. Well, when they go back down to other transitions or where they came from, they'll emit the energy they got in the form of a photon, which is inversely proportional to the wavelength. The optics inside the ICP will then separate these photons by wavelength and then correlates the signal to that of a known calibration standard or concentration to quantitate the metals. The ICP system and auto sampler system has a lot of tubing, in length that is, so you may be able to see all this tubing here that has to be rinsed out when you're doing an analysis. So if you're going from a very concentrated solution to another sample that doesn't have much of that element in it, you may have an issue, right? You may not have rinsed out what's in the sample prior to what you're doing now. So what we use is something called a fast valve. This application uses a one mil loop that can be rinsed out at about 25 liters a minute with a very quick rinse. Instead of about 90 seconds to rinse all the tubing out, this system only needs about seven to 10 seconds to rinse out that loop. Now we used an ESI FAST system in this application note that basically reduces your sample to sample time by half. Now for environmental laboratories, that's a huge productivity gain because you get paid per sample, right? The next thing that you have to worry about when we were talking about all these different elements here that we're having as solution, whether it's copper, nickel, iron, cobalt, chrome, you have a very complex spectrum, or can. For example, just iron has thousands of emission lines itself. Add in chrome and nickel and others that have a lot of em emission lines, and very soon you have an incredibly complex, complex spectrum. There's a pretty good chance that those lines are gonna overlap or interfere with the elements or the analytes of interest that you're trying to measure. The Optima system has the best resolution on the market for a simultaneous ICP system. Besides the excellent resolution of six picometers at 200 nanometers that the Optima has, the Optima is also the only unit to employ a correction that handles both complex backgrounds and spectral interferences at the same time. This technique is called multi-component spectral fitting, or MSF. It's basically an MLS deconvolution technique coupled with something called Kalman filtering, which handles very complex backgrounds and removes that as a component. 
This is an EPA approved method for 200.7 and can be superior to probably what you're familiar with now, which is inner element corrections or IECs. MSF, since it's modeling out different components in the spectrum itself, one of the main things that analysts have trouble with use it running complex matrices is to get rid of all the noise. You can have photon shot noise, you can have all kinds of different noise sources that actually shows up in your blank. Well, MSF models those noise components out. What that gives you is a two-fold increase in detection limits or lower detection limits. ICP is an excellent work source technique for waters and wastewaters and conforms completely to EPA 200.7. The inclusion of a fast system that we talked about with the one mil loop and that's all you have to rinse out, that can double your productivity. And MSF, if employed, can remove interferences and by taking out the background noise can result in lower detection limits. So please, at the end of the presentation here, click on the link and it will take you to the application itself with all the details, which is basically a standard operating procedure, an SOP, that includes all the lines, all the QC checks, all the calibration uh, standards that you need, and is basically a recipe for you to follow to make it much easier for you to do 200.7 in the analysis of drinking waters and wastes. Well, that's our report for this week. I hope you'll learn something new because you'll be smarter tomorrow and see you next week.